listening to Where You Live with Gene Sullivan. Welcome back to Where You Live. I'm Gene Sullivan, broadcasting from the True North Painting Studios. The show is also brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency, and Extreme Exteriors. Before we go into our next uh, story, I'd like to let all our listeners know we've got a free gift for you. We put together a bi-monthly newsletter called What's New. A lot of the topics that we discuss on the show, we uh, explore in further detail in that newsletter. People that will be on our show will also contribute and uh, write as well. It's a great resource. It's yours free. All you have to do is give us a call during the week at New Concepts at 952 952- 922-2500. Ask for Lori, and she'll make sure that you start receiving your copy either electronically or by mail. Well, as I uh, mentioned, uh, we have uh, this other story, uh, and this is coming from Culver City, California. The city council there has just earlier this week passed a new ordinance forbidding smoking in any shared residence within the city limits. Uh, It says, uh, and I quote, smoking of any substance that creates smoke is no longer legal. I find that interesting. Smoking of any soaps substance that creates smoke. Well, by its definition of smoking, you will be creating smoke. But I suppose they're probably trying to uh, uh, show a a difference between e-cigarettes, which isn't a smoke. It is vapor. So when you smoke uh, e-cigarettes, you're vaporizing. You're not smoking. And uh, uh, it says in this uh, particular ordinance, I guess uh, people with uh, e-cigarettes at this time are uh, still in the clear. They can uh, they can vaporize in their unit, but nobody can smoke. And uh, the reason why is they're concerned about uh, well-intentioned about uh, what is uh, uh, concerns for health hazards with secondhand smoke. And um, they want to say that it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's a homeowner association or uh, a rental. You know what? Uh, it's all going to be the same. It's going to be illegal. And uh, what's interesting is it passed by the city council by a vote of four to one. There was one person who dissented, and his name was council member Jeff Cooper. Now, he didn't dissent because he uh, didn't think uh, the ordinance was uh, a good law to have. He said, although, and this is his quote, although the ordinance was well-intentioned, his concern was it contains no teeth and would be impossible to enforce. And uh, this is uh, something that uh, I've talked about so many times uh, on the show before, as I've stated time and time again, that if you have a rule, if you have a law, uh, without any enforcement, without any consequences, you don't have a rule. You just have a suggestion. And that's exactly what's happened. And, uh, and, but, you know, the way politics go a lot of times with, with politicians, they seem to get credit and points for their intention. Well, we intend for this law to do such and such. It doesn't matter if the law was effective in doing it. Uh, They can turn around to their constituents and say, well, we wrote a law and it addressed this. So that's our intention. So you've got to vote for us again because we're the good people you want. Well, it's not about intentions. It's about your effectiveness. And you need to remember that in a homeowner association. And I want to take a look at this and uh, have us take a look today what's happening with this city council because what they're creating is something that is going to be ineffective. And it is uh, going to be something that if you don't have consequences, if you don't, if you don't have a way to actually enforce and make sure that you're going to be consistent in meeting this out, all you have is a mere suggestion. And some people like to think about that. Some people are just kind of uh, naysayers. I know how excited some people get to be uh, when they first get on the board they say you know what we need uh we need a law about this and we need a rule about that and they want to just create a rule a new law a new regulation uh as if thinking that the fact that you are just uh announcing it is enough and people are now going to comply 
So you are uh, under the idea that people are going to comply. Well, let's take a look. How has that worked? How well has that worked? I used earlier today that example of uh, dealing with uh, behavior in a vehicle. Uh, People have difficulty uh, keeping things within the speed limit. People do speed and that gets out of hand. Uh, there are tickets and a lot more tickets for that, like I said, than how many, when's the last time you've heard someone said, I got a ticket for driving on the wrong side of the road. That doesn't happen. Why? Because you don't have to worry about compliance. People see the need for the law. It, it's very real. They see that there are very real consequences consequences that are going to take place that can be very detrimental. And when you see that there are consequences and they're going to take place, you go, you know what? I think I'm going to decide otherwise. How many times do you need a a law that says, don't jump off the bridge? Uh, You know, you really don't. I mean, people, some people do to try and commit suicide, but I mean, as a whole society, you don't have to have a law that says, don't jump off the bridge. Most people know Yeah, you don't do that because it's going to have some uh, bad consequences, okay? And so you need to realize this if you're in a homeowners association. uh, You know, there are good enforcement rules, you know, uh, but when you are looking at what those rules and regulations should be in your homeowner association, you need to remember a few things, and I'd like to uh, offer that up here. Number one, there needs to be a way to measure the infraction took place. There needs, in other words, to be proof or evidence that the rule or ordinance was broken. Uh, it, it, one thing that can be very difficult is uh, uh, to uh, administer our uh, issues where people are saying uh, the people next door are just too loud. That can be a very subjective thing. And then by the time someone comes over and uh, to uh, take notice, it's not taking place. And then what do you do? Do you give uh, someone else uh, a fine? You give them a letter saying you, uh, you were in the wrong. And why? Because I heard so-and-so told me. Is that going to be the reason that you're going to do it? How difficult will that be? How, how would you like to receive uh, a letter from your association saying, we're going to give you a fine because so-and-so told us this is what you do and, we, and you can't do that in the association? Here's another issue that's real big with HOAs. How about uh, dog droppings? Oh, man. People never pick up after their their dog. You'll see see the dog poo uh, everywhere. But how many times? I I remember recently we had uh, one person who uh, called uh, one of our managers at New Concepts, and they were on the board, and they said, you know what? Uh, You can't have uh, any uh, animals, dogs or cats, outside without being uh, on a tether. They can't just be out loose. And this cat, I'm sure, belongs to so-and-so who lives across the street. She had another cat, but that one died, so this has got to be her her cat. And so based on that assumption, a letter was sent out. And then all of a sudden, oh, man, the, uh, the uh, pushback we got from the homeowner who said, my cat died. I don't have another cat. Why would you write a letter? This is a perfect example. You can't just do rules and regulations. You can't just do laws and say, well, based on uh, the fact that uh, so-and-so said that's happening. So is that what's going to happen? The person in the city council, Culver City, California, said there's no way of measuring how, uh, whether or not someone smoked uh, in their unit or not. How are you going to tell? Are you going to have the cigarette police that are going to come by now and say, anytime we knock, day or night, we have the ability and authority to enter into your home to be able to see if smoking is taking place? Well, uh, number one, no, they're not going to do it. Number two, they don't have the ability to have that kind of enforcement take place. That's the second thing you need to remember as an HOA. A lot of people are get real excited and they say, oh, here's our list of rules and uh, management company. You've got to make sure all of this takes place. But you're paying a small fee for a management company for certain things. 
you're not paying for the ability of someone to have one or several people available 24-7 walking the grounds of the property to make sure that they get any infraction when they take place. Because in the case of, uh, of uh, dog droppings, you can have someone who has a dog that drops in someone's yard and only to find that that person doesn't have a dog. Well, what are you going to do? Find them because it's in their yard? So that's what this one city council member was saying. You know what? We've got an issue here. I like the idea of protecting people from secondhand smoke, but we've got an issue with uh, enforcement. And you know what? There are a number of other people that were available that day at that city council members from homeowner associations and landlord and tenants that were also uh, available, and they gave uh, their thoughts. Do you want to know what those are? I'll tell you, but we're going to take a break first, so we'll share more about that after these messages. <laughs> 